Well, I might as well review it because everyone else has done it, and I think if I don't, I'll forget that I even watched it. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, the beginning of Phase 5, and... Well, you all know what the reception's been. You all know what the financial reception's been. Um, there has been a little bit of a shakeup at Marvel, not only with the Jonathan Majors possibly not being Kang anymore, but also just the fact that people spoke with their wallets and they didn't want to see this movie. I can proudly say that I did not see a single Ant-Man movie in theaters. I never thought any of these movies were interesting. The first one was okay-ish. I fell asleep watching Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think four times and that was during quarantine and then this one I mean I think it's better visually than the second one but holy shit the most plain Jane movie despite the very unique setting that the film takes place in Scott Lang and friends getting sucked into the quantum mania realm to find out about Kang who Michelle Pfeiffer had hung out with and been friends with, but also found out that he actually was a very generic villain who wants to destroy the world, and his unique trait is that he has more than one of him. And that's it. Whereas he had a bit of a unique introduction in the Loki show, I don't even know what Majors is doing in this role. Now I know that he's a good actor, I don't know about his career right now. He has shown that he has skill. He's not good in this movie. He's got this weird Shakespearean accent going on. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what the point of it was, but that's what you get when you have literal copy and paste, completely recyclable and reusable and replaceable directors that Marvel has somehow gotten two of them, two of them to complete trilogies. Peyton Reed and John Watts. Both of these guys are replaceable. Neither of these two have any unique element that they bring to their movies. The Spider-Man movies are better than the Ant-Man movies, but that's not exactly difficult to say when you have Spider-Man versus fucking Ant-Man. Even then, the Spider-Man movies don't have a lot of unique heart to them. But that's going on another tangent. This movie has no heart whatsoever. It is a very, very poor setup to Kang and the villain of the series, despite the fact that they made him a completely replaceable one-note villain. Every other replaceable villain that we've had in Marvel, aside from ones like Killmonger, ones like Thanos, and yes, I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but nothing has been interesting about the Marvel movies since Endgame. They have maybe gotten a little bit of a rise out of me from a few of them. Everything since has just been like, hey, we know you'll come in and give us money, but Marvel is starting to realize that that's not gonna happen. Ever since Thor Love and Thunder, I don't want to see anything that Marvel releases in theaters except for Guardians 3 and then after that I don't know I might walk away despite all of this aggression that I had I was going into this movie being like at least entertain me at least do something for me but even then it can't even give me a climax that I am interested in let alone a visual experience that goes anything further than oh okay it's kind of like a Doctor Who episode, but with more money. And I haven't even gotten to talk about fucking MODOK yet. How on earth did any of the visual effects guys say, yeah, you know, it's a good idea. Keep showing the face. The thing that's on comparable level with the baby from the Breaking Dawn movies. Keep showing this face, let alone creating a sympathetic goofball angle to a guy who in the first movie brutally goobed a dude to death within his first introduction. I know that most people probably don't remember who he is, and I will give the movie one funny note, is that every time there was this dramatic kind of backstory reveal, slow reveal to a character, it's interrupted. I'm not a dick, oh, like someone was paid to write that shit. Someone was paid to write Modoc's dialogue in this movie. Someone was paid to make this movie in general. And this movie went through reshoots, people. This movie went through multiple reshoots, but not even as many as the Marvel's movie has. That movie just completed its fourth round of reshoots. Overall, Quantumania is not the worst movie that's come out of the MCU. I still think 
Love and Thunder is worse. Did not have any fun watching this movie. It was clear, it's clear that a lot of other people didn't, to the point where Marvel is scrambling now to try and do some form of recovery. But in the end, I am going to give Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania a two out of seven. And if I were to rank the other ones, I would have maybe given the first one a four and I would have given the second one a two as well. Wait, we never got a Hellboy trilogy but we get an Ant-Man trilogy. We get this fucking piece of garbage and we don't get a Hellboy 3 from Gamaliel Del Toro. Good things just don't happen sometimes. But anyways, guys, that's all from me. What did you guys think of this movie? I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. Let's not make it a super toxic environment. I understand I was a bit critical, but if there's any kind of positives you guys have, but also kind of what are your thoughts on the Marvel sanctum right now? Like, what do you think they're thinking right now? Not just in terms of what could happen with majors not just in terms of the marvel's movies reception on youtube just like the marvel verse in general do you guys think it might be going a little bit of the wayside or do you think it still has potential let me know in the comments below very interested to see your answers anyways guys that's all for me hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe until then i'll see you guys next time